Now let's set up our animation. To do that, I need a animation blueprint. So I'm gonna go create a animation blueprint. And here it's gonna be using the uh, actually the should be skeleton. Okay, uh, we can call this guy. Oops, no, we don't have to say anything here. Select this guy and hit OK. We can call this guy uh, should be uh, actually animation VP. Should be okay. And now if I double click to open it, I have this animation blueprint. Now the first thing I want to do here is actually gather some information from my player character. So instead of doing this animation graph, let's go to the event graph. Uh, and this is going to be the update animation, which is basically like a tick. Okay. And what I need to do is gather the information of if the player is jumping and the moving speed of the player. Uh, so what that means is that I need to somehow get the player pawn that is using it. So we can say try get pawn owner. Okay. And after that, I'm going to say let's cast it to the, uh, we're using, we're naming it uh, BP character base. So this is going to be the one. All right. And when we're doing that. We can also say if it's valid, right? We can maybe promote it to a variable, so we can always reference it later on. Now we can call this new variable. How about the uh, own character? Right, that seems to be a nice name. All right. Now just to squeeze a little performance out of it, we don't have to cast it all the time. We can say we can just holding down control and drag the own character from the variable, and let's check if it's valid. If it is valid already, that means we have uh, set it up already, so we don't really have to do this. So uh, if it's not valid, that's where we actually run it. Okay. And if it is valid already, then we can just start doing our stuff. Okay. So I'm gonna do a sequence because I have. A bunch of things I want to do, and of course this one, of course, uh, has to also go there. Right. So either way, we'll go set things up. We're just checking if we have this one, cast it and set it up already. If we do, then we just don't do this process anymore. Okay. Now moving on from there, I kind of wanted to know the velocity of the character. Okay. So I'm gonna say I'm just gonna use this guy now, right? I have this guy already. Control and drag it out. Okay. I need to get the velocity right away. Okay. Now because I'm calculating on a local scale that I wanted to, local space that I want to really calculate the the re relative direction this velocity is to the actual geometry. Uh, so I need to actually get the mesh. Okay. So get the mesh. And this one is hard to find down there. So I got the mesh here, and then what I can do is get its transform. Okay. When I get its word transform, what I can do is I can use that to reverse transform this guy to the mesh space here. So I get the forward and right relative to the mesh. Uh, to do so, I have to drag this guy out and then say inverse transform direction. Okay. And then I just drag the velocity here. Okay. That's going to make transfer, uh, transform this velocity from the word space to the local space of our mesh. Okay. And I'm going to use that information uh, for the velocity. So I'm going to drag that out from the uh, Execution, execution pin here. Uh, let's actually just set it uh, to a promote it to a variable. Oops, not that one. <laughs> promote to variable. We can call this variable uh, mesh space velocity, and that will be in uh, connected to the execution pin. So that's the first thing I want to do, get the velocity. Double click there and drag it up. Okay, 
Second thing I want to know is I just want to know if we're jumping or not. So in the second execution pin, I can say, oh, let's also just get this guy out, right? Control character, and I need to know the movement component. So get character movement, I think. No, mm, just type in character movement maybe. Or movement component. Okay. Oh, that's the pawn. I, I think we're casting it to the character. We should be able to get that character movement. Yeah, that's the one. So the character movement component, because that one has a lot more information than the pawn movement component. And so we're going to ch check the falling. So it's falling here. And we just promote it to, again, a variable. All right, so that goes to the second execution pin here. I have this sequence so it's easier to see what I'm doing here and what I'm doing here in you know, multiple steps. Uh, double click to create a reroute, put it here. And this one is going to be in air, right? And I can grab this one and hit C button and say this is going to be get local uh, mesh space it's good to comment your stuff uh, otherwise you wouldn't even know what it is uh, later so get mesh space velocity and this one is get falling status maybe or whatever you want to call it and some people also name this guy instead of in air, they call it maybe it's falling. So it's consistent because that's what you're getting from the movement component. All right, so that's the setup for now in the event graph. What we did it again, it's just gather some information from the character that we can use to drive our animation afterwards. Let's compile and save. And moving on to the next one, we're gonna actually set up the animation graph. Okay, see you next time.